Hi everybody. Tonight we are going to study the most important thing that I can possibly think of. And I hope it makes everyone a lot of money as well, but in general, I was thinking to myself tonight, someone mentioned a place of far off land and I decided to myself that I should think about this area. Um, what you are looking at here is the Baltic Sea and um, I want to switch here to the uh, other uh, map. So um, if you look at this area here, this area is a very interesting area. Um, all of this area in fact, but we're primarily going to focus on this area in here. Maybe even some side things. We'll, we'll see how far we can get tonight, but um, I honestly hope not too far because it's a lot of work. And um, so what I'm thinking here is that um, the Mediterranean, as awesome as it is, and uh, there's another guy on the internet that does uh, something called the Caspian Report, if you haven't heard of it, and it's really great. I love his project. Um, but the Baltic Sea is a whole separate area up here. And I think a lot of, uh, I'm not sure how to say this, but I think I might be from some of these areas, like really far in the distant past. But So maybe that's a personal thing here. But, but I've been studying the Arctic. And... Um, as you get closer and closer to the North Pole and head into outer space, the aurora shows up here. Um, it actually dips right down here, primarily into uh, Iceland, but it also hits a significant part of Norway. Um, so if you're interested in outer space, there's just no debate that this is a very important area to study, um, Iceland and Norway. Um, in terms of uh, the electromagnetic fields of Earth, great spot to just, uh, there's towns up here. Now, in in America, there's really nothing up here, up in Alaska. There's a small grocery store up here, I noticed, but they even don't even have a road to the grocery store. They have an airplane that drops the food up. But anyway, that's a whole separate area. We're, we're trying to study the Baltic. So, but here's the reason that you can make a lot of money from this idea, is that, so, uh, there's just so many reasons. Um, I'm kind of afraid to talk about some of them because, you know, it's it's a quiet land up here and not a lot of people. Um, let's start by looking at the population in this region. So it's it's loading this image, and sorry, it's kind of not looking very reasonable. Let's let's even change the uh, opacity. So that that is the population, and you can see in Europe most of the people live in here. Um, but if you're familiar with Europe, the United Nations is actually doing some interesting projects here in Denmark, um, as well as in Italy and some other places. The, some of their foreign offices um, do kind of make it in this area. And the interesting fact is that if you look at the map here, uh, basically these are mountainous series here, so there's not too much farming. And a lot of the people, ooh, man, my food's... I gotta watch my food, so I'm gonna have to pause this for a second.
All right. So here we are um, looking at the climate. And for the longest time, I've had a problem with uh, understanding Europe without this map. And if you look at this, you can download this and add it uh, to Google Earth here. Um, but you'll notice that most of Europe actually has this green climate, um, which is kind of a darker green. Um, and you can tell that that darker green is slightly different than most of the United States. Um, but down in here, you can see kind of this light green. This is a essentially a California style of climate. Um, but actually, before it was called the California climate, and my friend joked with me, he says this is the Mediterranean climate. And, uh, but... The thing I was realizing the other day is that I was probably from Europe originally. I'm probably from maybe even England. I speak English. Um, but uh, the interesting thing is that the temperatures here are just slightly above freezing typically. Let's see if we can get a temperature map for you. Um, so you might you might really not like me for this, but I'm not going to show you a temperature map. Um, but this climate map, the one that we were looking at, is essentially the same as this. This, for some reason, they show these really detailed. If you download this um, standard vector file, um, it's a little bit more detailed than. The map that you can add I, I think you get the same accuracy but there's some I have to figure it out on Google Earth but anyway so you can kind of see that the subtle details here in the climate um, and um, what I would say that's super interesting here is actually the sunshine map so the problem is that as you get further and further north, you get further and further away from the equator, which is where the sun averages, and basically less hours of light every day. But amazingly, this map shows you the Gulf Stream, and I could not believe it. I was here in Ireland on that little spot there, and this water is so warm and unbelievably makes it up into these areas. And actually, you can swim. You can't even swim in California, but you can swim way the heck up north here off the coast of Ireland. It's unbelievable. Um, so, um, that aside, this has some really nice, you can see the mountain ranges here. But we're essentially trying to look at this area. So, I'm going to switch back here to the other um well, I didn't want to switch. There we go. So, on this map, it doesn't look very detailed, but if you zoom in, you can start to see what's going on. And these are the roads and, and the whole situation. So, just less roads out here, and it gets out into the middle of seemingly nowhere. But, there are so many interesting projects that I have personally discovered that have happened in the far north here that I have to study this area. And it would be very interesting to see how I could potentially even make money in this area. So the story goes like this. In terms of England, um, England is a lot like the Japan of Europe. This area basically heads out into Russia and most of Europe, most of the Europeans, if you look at the population map, most of them live in here. And as you head out here, and then there's this weird oddity of Moscow. But let's zoom in and look at the actual Baltic Sea and see what the major towns are. I'm going to try to turn off the roads here. It's going to get dark. We're going to have to keep a careful look. So... 
now you can start to see what's going on. And essentially, Copenhagen is kind of the doorway here to the rest of this area, right? So you can kind of see that there's this little passageway. If you turn off this, it's basically the only way to get through by boat is to pass through Copenhagen out through here. So it makes it a very, very strategic place for the rest of the Baltic Sea. And in fact, this has caused major problems because the water, from what I understand, the salt water content or the oxygen in this water is very low in general or something like that. So there's there's a major fish problem in the Baltic Sea. And in fact, there is like no fish in the Baltic Sea. It's that bad and that unbelievable. So this entire area has no fish. And the way that I looked at that is I saw no fishing boats. And I, I could try to show you this later. Um, and you can kind of see what's going on. But there are some very interesting cities here. Um, the first city that I want to point out is this, outside of Copenhagen, is this city Tallinn. And from what I understand, after World War II, this was the only city that suffered no war damage. So if you visit there, all the buildings are intact. Um, and it gives you an unbelievable historical perspective of what the buildings look like. And we'll even zoom in a little bit to see. So, And the nice part about this city in particular is it's, it's right on the ocean. Now I have all these buildings and little other things listed here. Now, the other major city you want to know about is St. Petersburg back in here. And that's St. Petersburg, right? And and then there's Stockholm. So I really want to go to Oslo someday, but honestly, there's there's an even more interesting place out here. Um, but uh, but in general, there's a lot of farmland that possible farmland as the earth starts to warm um, up in Sweden and Finland and other areas. And if you look at fin Helsinki. You can let me even turn off these. Uh, it's getting really annoying. Sorry, um, but if you take a step back, so we're just trying to get get to know the the entire area here, and uh, I'm gonna have to turn off the uh, place categories here. So that's just too much. Now let's look at the Earth at night, and then kind of see where we're at on this earth at night. So this is the electricity essentially and light. So you can kind of start to see the significance of St. Petersburg, which we were looking at right over here, just from the earth at night imagery. And you can see Tallinn and Helsinki and Stockholm and then Copenhagen and Riga. And, and, and interesting what happened in Europe, like before the 1400s and all that, is that in the Mediterranean, a lot of cities, important cities, moved inland because of the pirates. People would just sail up and down the coast. Like if you're sailing up and down the coast, you need food. And so they would build castled cities deep inside Europe, which is some, in some ways why London is so far inland there. It has a river, but that's a possibility. So... Uh, but in general, uh, as you move further and further away, just it, just less and less people wanted to head out this way. Um, so it's a lot of uh, really fresh land, and the ideas here are very different. So when you're thinking about investment, um, I really want to find some interesting companies. Um, and I already have, and I'm not actually even going to say which companies. Um, I'll give you... One hint here is that there are some companies working on fuel cells for hydrogen power. So from what I understand, cars, when you use hydrogen power, there is a very minimal amount of toxins released into the atmosphere. I don't know if that's totally true. It seems almost impossible to me. There Maybe it's like smaller amounts or more dangerous, but apparently... That's what I've been hearing. So uh, I'm going to turn this off again. And uh, 
we're going to just take a quick look at each one of these. And I think we should probably start with Copenhagen now that I think about it. Now, I did leave the Wikipedia markers on here, so I just want to give a look. Now, what we're trying to scout out here is nice places to live and work and uh, just different possibilities for my future, your future, and what's going on here in the Baltic Sea. So in a simple perspective, Copenhagen is easy because it's this little island here, right? And it's fairly well connected to the rest of Europe, even though it's a little bit hard. To, uh, most, mostly everyone would disagree with me on that. But in terms of the rest of these, Copenhagen is... Now, the problem that I have with Copenhagen is I like very beautiful cities with mountains. And it is very flat here. And it's a lot like where my mom and dad live um out in the uh, cape cod boston area if you're familiar with that it's pretty flat there and it's kind of marshy um and here you can kind of see copenhagen and there are some other cities here that people have kind of gone to now the climate in general is important to consider because we're not i am not going to take a look at any really freezing cold places so the nice part about this is that a lot of these places are not super, super cold as you might think um, because they're close to the water. Um, in fact, I think London is usually pretty warm in the winter, um, pretty mild winters. Um, so let's, let's add this climate back on. So you can kind of see that this climate is actually all the same all throughout here. And it does get pretty cold there in Tallinn and Helsinki, you can see. So that would be a question maybe to start looking at in this Gulf of Finland area. But uh, but here we are in, in – and now Oslo, the nice part is there are a lot of mountains there, but it is f very far inland, and it's hard to – I like I like a city where you can just see the ocean right from the – you know, like right where you're at. Now, if you look at Oslo, you got to kind of go all the way back in here. And that's why I was very interested in this other place in out here. And a lot of the cool hip companies are actually moving out into this area. Um, and the climate you can see is still pretty good. And it might be even warmer here in this uh, city. So... Uh, just because of the Gulf Stream that we were looking at. So, uh, and there are some businesses that we need to think about. So, we're going to try to look at that from this perspective. Um, I might just keep it at this for right now um, and uh, leave it in your court. Like, what do you think is interesting about the Baltic Sea? Uh, I'm going to try to go through and look at uh, what the businesses are in Norway, Sweden, Finland. And then these kind of Baltic states here, and just come up with a top list of largest um, companies in the Baltic area. Um, I may not be able to publish that or get to that right away, but um, but in general, uh, this is kind of an introduction, right? So I would say that uh, uh, the uh, there there are some maps that have. GDP per capita, and it's hard to get those with an overlay, like a nice overlay on Google Earth like this. Um, and interestingly, you can see right down here, this is about 300 miles. So 300 miles, maybe more than that, but seems kind of quick from Copenhagen to Stockholm, but maybe another 400 miles to Amsterdam. So, uh, but, uh, but yeah, there's just so much to study here in the Baltic Sea, and... Uh, I'm actually really interested in what you think. So what what you think, what areas would be really interesting to study here. Um, I would like if you could take a look at the climate and just reconsider. I really do want to get into Tallinn and Helsinki and also uh, St. Petersburg here. Um, the problem is St. Petersburg is pretty flat. Stockholm's pretty flat. And uh, it's just not my style. So, uh, so uh I think that kind of leaves 
Norway um, with really beautiful mountains and some interesting scenery. Uh, and uh, certainly Stockholm, if you've ever seen it, is really far inland here. And it's, it's hilarious to me how they get boats in here. I've seen the pathways to get boats into Stockholm and it's just hilarious. Like I, I don't even know right now how they would do this, but there is a pathway and they must dredge it somehow. So and what does it say? Stockholm something. These are Stockholm, Sweden, and uh, Academy of Sciences. But there's just a lot. There's just a lot here in Stockholm that would be really interesting. Now, the reason I say Stockholm <coughs> would be interesting is because, man, living on an island and close to the water is great. Um, it's just not right on the ocean front, but you can kind of see basically the layout of Stockholm here. Um, Let's just go over to uh, Helsinki because this needs to be kind of a complete look at this area. So here we can look at Helsinki. And you can see that uh, a little bit more ocean front here on Helsinki's side, right? So you can kind of even like a harbor, which is really helpful in terms of uh, just uh, boating and everything really. But you can see kind of this mucky area. That to me is a sign of very shallow water and also a lot of drainage from rivers that are not moving very fast. Um, and that is a warning sign because, you know, it, this water is probably way too cold to swim in. Um, but, uh, and then these little Wikipedia markers show you the interesting things in their city. So we can kind of see a couple of these, uh, a couple of these places. Um, and then just kind of a cruise and then certainly it is nice having all these little islands here and uh uh but it, it just gives you a, a quick idea so i've been making way too long videos i'm really sorry about that but uh uh but there's just so much i mean when you're talking about just the baltic sea area so uh but i would say in terms of getting the companies what i'm going to try to do next maybe in a couple hours here i'm kind of tired uh, is just uh, look at the uh, do a stock screener for the companies in Sweden, Finland, and uh, Oslo, and or come up with some way of just getting the whole region, um, and just categorizing them, um, just to see uh, who's doing what around here. I am familiar with uh, a couple of them already. Um, but I didn't want to be biased here. I want to try to be as little as biased as possible and just kind of show what they are. Um, because when I'm wrong, then I'll know in a few years, keeping this relevant. So, uh, but yeah, so I, you know, and, and the Mediterranean down here, I mean, it's just, it's super interesting. And you can see, obviously, Greece is a great place and you can swim in the water and it's, it's really fun. But, uh, but the price is just so high here. And, and, and honestly, there are a lot of little mountains here in Greece, and you can kind of see these mountainous areas. But uh, but honestly, uh, Norway is pretty competitive uh, with a nice area here. So, um, you know, and uh, uh, but yeah, it's just it's just a whole separate area. So it's just so so far away from Mediterranean that sometimes I wonder maybe if these guys even think about the Mediterranean. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, anyway, I'll talk with you later. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think. See you.